Hey friends, Andy here. How you doing? Good to see you. In this video, I'm doing an AMA. Ask me anything, or maybe you should call it a triple A. Ask Andy anything. But unlike the real triple A, I'm not gonna show up when you're on the side of the road with a flat tire. I am sorry to disappoint you. But what I will fix with your help is the YouTube algorithm and this video. All you do is smash that like button. And while you're smashing things, maybe smash the subscribe button too while you're at it. Both of those feel pretty good and I really appreciate it. All right, let's jump in to the questions. Seeing more of these mining rigs pop up, MNTD most recently, are they always profitable or does it largely depend on where you live and electric costs? So MNTD makes helium hotspots. They're not really mining machines. They're just something that runs on the network and you earn rewards for doing so, but people call it helium mining. As far as electricity, they don't cost any. They use five watts. That'll maybe cost you a couple dollars per year to run. As for are they always profitable? Well, no, it depends on where you live and it depends on what the antenna setup is. If there are no other hotspots anywhere near you within like 100 or 200 miles, well then you're probably not gonna make any money with it. They need to connect to other hotspots. But one of the ones I have is connected to hotspots like 30 miles away. So if you are within 10 to 30 miles or more, depending on which antenna you have and you can connect to other ones, then yes, I think they are very profitable. In a good spot with a good antenna at a good height, they can pay themselves off in like two to five months. And after that, they just make profit every month. And they only cost four to $700 each. So I think it's a great way to get started with some crypto passive income. I might be late to the game, but I'm curious about Titano. What's your thoughts on the project and sustainability? Well, I am in Titano. I put like $4,000 into it and I'm at like 6,500. So a little over a 50% return so far. I do have considerable misgivings about the project. Uh, I'm not gonna get into in this video. I need to do more research on it. Uh, I don't feel super confident about it long-term, but right now it's performing great. So when my money doubles, I will probably pull my initial out and then just let the rest ride and see what happens. As for sustainability, I mean, it's 100,000% APY. I mean. I don't really believe it can last the long term, but hey, you know, I'm happy to be wrong if it does last the long haul and if I happen to still have money in it. So Anthony's asking quite a long and detailed question here, which really probably should be a full on video covering all these things. In fact, if you watch this video, I do cover uh, a number of these things and what I look for in a project. But one point I will make right now is he's saying it seems that we're primarily betting on what a team can and will pull off and what's on their roadmap when it comes to getting in early and the success of all these NAS and DAS projects. Really, I think that team and roadmap and stuff like that is great. It's icing on the cake. But in this ultra hype uh, environment, it's not that relevant. The big play with a lot of these is just get in early and get your initial out as soon as possible and then be pleasantly surprised if they continue lasting on it in the future. And then if they do, that's where tokenomics, roadmaps, team become way more relevant once they last past the few months or even a year mark. Of all the FUD, regulations, wars, inflation, etc., what do you fear will impact your portfolio the most? Well, I don't think it's going to happen, but an actual real fear of mine is that the US outright bans uh, crypto. I think crypto will survive that. I think that ban wouldn't last, but the short term on my portfolio will be quite ugly. Hi Andy, two questions. What's the expected ROI or monthly profits estimate for the new Cumulus Flux node? Uh, unknowable. We need to wait until more of them come online and for the rest of the nodes uh, to be switched over and come online. And then we probably have to give it a few months to kind of figure itself out. And then once it all balances out, then we'll know what it's going to be. Do you have experience with cheaper VPS alternatives than UpCloud to run pre-search nodes on? Yes. Racknerd is a great one there. You can run them on the free tier of Amazon Web Service. And of course you can run them on the Flux network. Hey again, Andy. Hey again, Anthony. Does your Sleep Money Club have conversations or resources on how to approach protocol research and analysis? Yes, and yes, and yes. I'm in the DTC e-commerce space, so I'm new to the business, but I'm fairly new to the world of crypto and blockchain. I'm looking to get further educated on how to strategically dive into these different high risk, high reward projects. So yes, definitely consider joining Sleep Money Club because I'm in there every single day talking about all this type of stuff, including the high risk projects. Not only that, but we have people who are dedicated to researching them and writing up analysis of them. We talk tokenomics and runway and what's upcoming, new launches so you can get in early. 
We even try to get white lists for some of these new projects so you can get in for the pre-sales. I started Sleep Money Club with my good friend, Colin, the Decade Investor. And the two of us are in there every day talking strategy, talking crypto, and hanging out with a whole bunch of like-minded crypto investors. So if any of that stuff interests you, then check the link in the description for Sleep Money Club. Hi, Andy. How many squirrels do you think it would take to lift a giraffe? All right, there's a question for you. Well, a squirrel, I think, can probably hold like four to six nuts at a time. And let's say six nuts, and let's say each nut is three ounces, two ounces, two ounces. Let's say each nut is two ounces. So each squirrel can hold 12 ounces, which would be 0.75 pounds. How much does a giraffe weigh? I don't know. I know big lions can be like 750 pounds at their peak. I think a giraffe is probably like three lions, four lions. Let's say three lions. So 2,250 pounds. Do I think a giraffe is over a ton? Let's say a giraffe is 1,800 pounds. That still sounds crazy. Maybe that's true. They're big animals though. Let's say a giraffe is 1,800 pounds. Divide that by 0.75. So 2,400 squirrels is my best guess of how many squirrels it would take to lift a giraffe. Thank you for the math teacher question. That's a fun one. I'm probably way off. I'm not new to crypto, but I've never run a node. What node project do you suggest for someone looking to get started? Watch this video to learn about pre-search and why I think it's one of the best ways to learn about how to run a crypto node. Who is your favorite YouTuber in your field? Well, my favorite, I've got a lot of favorites. A few of my favorites are James Pelton, Jesse Eckel, Decade Investor, Tactical Investing, Martin Valk, Space Design Warehouse, Kolev Coin, Dan's Passive Income and Microcaps, Aaron Molinex, Jack's Passive Income, Action Crypto, Ryan Mata, and one last one as a mining choice, I love myself some Red Fox Crypto. Yes, for my favorite, and I gave you like, I don't know, eight or 10, I don't know how many that was. Favorite holiday ever. Oh, uh, Patrick. Well, that's a tough one. I'm not really a big holiday person. I think most holidays are just like commercially created things that we all do for whatever reason. I'd rather just get together with friends or family for no reason than some arbitrary corporate reason. So as far as which one is my favorite, I don't know. Any of the ones where I'm excused and allowed to just eat a bunch of food and gorge myself. I like to eat. So holidays with eating are my vote. Brandon asks, if I were a sea creature, what would I be? I have no idea what I would be. I'd like to say something like a orca or a shark. I don't think I'm cool enough to be those things, but I would have to be something big because I'm a tall guy. So maybe some kind of whale. Maybe there's like an awkward, weird whale that I could be. Or maybe I'd just be a merman. How old am I? 37. And when did you get started with your crypto journey? Love ya. Love you back, Roberto. So I got started with crypto um, seriously in 2017, but I bought my first little bit of Bitcoin in 2014. So this person's asking about uh, how many other social media accounts I operate and stuff. How many other Oh Hi Andes do I run? Well, the answer is only the one. If I ever DM you or talk to you about investment stuff or invite you to exclusive clubs, that is not me. Every single week, I report five to 10 impersonator accounts that are trying to scam you. I'd love to DM you, but I just don't have the time to do that with everybody. So if I'm DMing you, telling you to send me money or hop on exchange or how's your trading going, it is not me. I only have one Twitter account, only one YouTube account. I think I have an Instagram, but I don't ever use it. So yes, those are all scammers. Stay far, far away. Same with the comments down below. A million scammers asking you to hop on the Telegram or whatever, not me. You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? What is your favorite cheese? Sorry, Andy, but I'm just sick of crypto at the moment. Oh, I don't know, I like lots, but a nice, beautiful cheddar, especially on a wonderfully crafted burger is top tier. Aged cheddar. 
What are your thoughts on Ethereum 2.0? I think it'll be great whenever it does finally happen, but I'm not holding my breath that it's actually gonna happen anytime soon. Ethereum loves to delay releases, so I think it's probably gonna be a lot farther out than most people think. But I think once it does happen, if it actually does reduce gas fees and all that good stuff, it could be very cool. But I think it's also gonna put a shockwave through the mining marketplace and the entire GPU market is probably going to crash for a while. And then eventually all those GPUs will find their way into hands of people who are interested in them and also onto the other projects and coins that are also mineable like Ethereum, like Flux. Investment advice for teens, do it. Start as soon as you possibly can. Okay. Do it, mm -hmm. do it. If you're under the age of 18, you can't open an account, get your parents to help you out. Your decisions you make in your teenage or early uh, 20s, uh, those years can make you a millionaire or multi-millionaire later in life. So don't waste them, use them, invest. Give me three reasons why I shouldn't degen into every node project. One of them is bound to take off, right? Yeah, maybe. And I don't know if I can give you any reasons why you shouldn't do that. Unless you're going all in with them. And then in that case, I'll say, do you not like money? Cause you're gonna lose a lot of money if you go all into these things. But done responsibly and knowing that they're mostly gambling. Yeah, sure you can make some real money and I do it too. So I don't know if I'm the person who's going to convince you otherwise. Every day that one of these works out for me, I become more and more of a degen myself. Are you involved in mining any crypto? If yes, which ones and through what means? Yes, I have two 1660 Ti mining rigs. One is on Ethereum, one is on Flux. I used to have a much bigger operation, but I've scaled it down over the years. I love GPU mining, and if I have another place in the near future with better electric rates, I will probably dive in even bigger than I currently am. How can I get into crypto, I'm guessing, with a couple of bucks, and the answer is, Try to get more bucks first. You can certainly make some traction with very little amounts of money in crypto, but if instead you can increase your money to put more money into crypto, your chances of success are greatly increased. If I was just starting out today, what crypto would I invest in today to generate further crypto investments? Various mining things, uh, helium hotspots, flux nodes, pre nodes, uh, with a dash of the high yield stuff sprinkled all amongst all of those. How do you find the time to do so many things in the crypto space? Are you a robot? Be honest. Yes, I am. You caught me. The jig is up. I'm a robot. I don't sleep. I don't eat. I just stare at Discord all day long. How's your Helium setup doing these days? Well, my one Helium hotspot is doing great. It does $150 to $250 in Helium per month, but I need to upgrade the card because it keeps going down. That's a me problem, not an it problem. What advice would you give to a college graduate working on their first real job, just starting to consider investing 401k or DCA with Bitcoin and Ethereum? Well, I can't tell you where to put your money, but I don't really put very much money into the stock market right now, but I think it's very wise, especially for younger people, to still do something boring like a Roth IRA array with S&P 500 index funds. That said, I think the opportunities in crypto are so overwhelmingly amazing that you'd be crazy to not consider putting money there too. But the main thing I tell everybody is earn as much money as you can and invest as much of that as you can. What do you do with your mining rigs that get hot during summer? They don't. I have a big industrial fan pulling air across them. Even here in Texas, when the summer temperatures get to be over 100, 105 degrees, that's still cool air compared to the temperature of the GPUs themselves. And all you're doing is just moving air across them to remove heat. My GPU miners run all summer long, no issues, no air conditioning, just in a shed with a big fan pulling air across them. What's your favorite food and dessert? Favorite food? Overwhelmingly a hamburger. I would eat them 24 seven if I could. They're one of the most perfect foods ever made. I love hamburgers. And my favorite dessert? Creme brulee, hands down. Mm, a delicious, perfect, wonderful creme brulee is the penultimate dessert, in my opinion. How did you get so vascular? Um, I am naturally veiny. Thank you for asking. How did your wife slash family initially react when you started to become self-employed and then eventually venture into crypto? I found those closest to you can be very quick to dismiss your goals if it seems out of reach to them. So I've been an entrepreneur for my entire life. My first business I ever started was in elementary school. I started another one in junior high and high school. And then I kind of bought into what the world told me I should do, which is go to college, get a job. And I tried to do the whole job nine to five thing. And I think that it's good that I learned that I'm not supposed to do that, but also I kind of wish I never did those things. I kind of wish I just did what I was supposed to do, which is be a lifelong entrepreneur, find my way through life like that. But as far as what do people around me think, my wife is very supportive. My family is generally supportive, but you know, I changed my mind and I changed my direction a lot. So they're just kind of like, well, Andy's doing something else weird uh, this month or whatever. So they just kind of go with the flow. I will say there has been some bumpy 
issues about the crypto stuff about, you know, should I be focusing as much on it or putting as much money into it or, you know, should I cash it out or keep it or whatever, but largely it's all been more or less a non-issue. And I think that the results have been speaking for themselves. What kind of financial situation would you recommend before investing high amounts of money into crypto? This comes down to whatever your risk tolerance is, what your convictions and beliefs are. For me, I put most of my money that's available to invest into crypto. Other people think that's crazy and that I should be putting most of my money into the stock market with only a small percentage into crypto. It's up to you. You can decide your own destiny of investing. But generally speaking, I recommend you have somewhat of a firm foundation, meaning you don't have tons of crazy, awful debt. You have somewhat of an emergency fund and at least one stable income, better yet if you have multiple sources of income. But really it's up to you and what you think the future holds. But there's no shame in putting some money into some safer, traditionally safer things. Not a financial advisor. Can you tell us about your early stages in crypto from how much you first invested to when you made your first 10X or so? Well, when I first invested, it was probably like $100 or something like that. And then a few thousand here, there kind of stepped into it over time. But over the past five years, I've put about $180,000 into crypto and my portfolio is worth today a little over $1.2 million. Not sure I remember my first 10X, but I've had several over the years. But for a lot of my crypto investing, it's been during a crypto winter, a terrible uh, bear market. So there wasn't much excitement. It was just me putting money in, watching it dip down in value more and just continuing to put money in and pick projects. And then only in the past year and a half have I had real results show up. And some of them, for example, have been many more than 10 X's. For example, Flux, I have a return of 7,897% on that one. Why do you have so little GPUs considering your other investments? I want more GPUs, I want more mining, but honestly, where I currently live, the power costs, all that, it's a little bit tough. So as soon as I have some more space and a bigger area for it, I wanna dive much more headfirst into mining because I love mining and I've had a much bigger operation in the past, but it was very costly to run where I'm at. How much do I squat? I have no idea. I don't think I've ever done a weighted squat in my entire life. My type of working out that I enjoy, I like doing yoga and I like swimming laps. I have very little interest in weight training and stuff, but maybe I should, maybe I should bulk up. But anyways, never done a squat with weights in my life. Nodes, I'm interested to hear a clear explanation on how emissions affect a protocol. Seems to me that they pay out a native token, not USD. Yeah, so many folks hammer that no protocol can pay millions a month in emissions. Yeah, so most of these protocols are all sustainable from a token standpoint. For as long as the protocol is operating, they can pay out their tokens for the to the end of time, basically. However, whether those tokens are worth anything in terms of US dollar is where the big debate comes up. So many of them are not sustainable in that they put out so many of their tokens, they are so high inflationary and they're not bringing enough new people in to buy them to keep the price up. It just has so much sell pressure that eventually they go to zero more or less. Why do node projects continue to invest their treasury funds into other node projects and not sustainable yield projects? Reminds me of the financial crisis and synthetic instruments. Those dominoes came tumbling down real fast. And yeah, I see a lot of similarities and I don't know, but some of those other protocols, the only thing that pay out uh, rates high enough to maintain the main protocols interest rates. So yeah, it's gonna be very interesting to see what the next few months look like as some of these things do start collapsing. How do you know when you've met the right person? This is a very deep question here amongst all the crypto things. Um, how do you know when you've met the right person? I don't know. I will say that I think there are lots of the right person. I don't believe in the one. I think there are probably lots of people you can be compatible with uh, in this world. There's, you know, seven or eight billion of us. So the odds are in your favor. I think of a lot, it comes down to just people have too high of standards. They have this picture perfect idea of what a person uh, is supposed to be. And if it doesn't selfishly check every box in their uh, on their list, then at that point, then they're not the right person or whatever. I think if we accept other people as imperfect, flawed humans like ourselves and we just find someone who makes us laugh or we enjoy traveling with or we like going places and experiencing life with, more people might find their right person. I don't know the answer to this. I have been married for 12 years, but you know, in the big grand scheme of things on a cosmic level, what does that even mean? Probably nothing. So these are my opinions and it might not be helpful to you. If I go back and start over in your passive income journey, what would you do differently? If anything, why? Well, I'd go back to my first time I heard about Bitcoin in 2012 or 2013 and put all my money into it. Or in 2018, when Flux first started launching, I would put all my money into that. I mean, really, I don't know. Hindsight is one of those things where you look back with perfect clarity, but all the lessons I've learned from it are what inform my current and future decisions. And so I'm really thankful for any mistakes I've made and the path I've taken. Sure, I could have put 
$20 into Shiba Inu or into Dogecoin at the right time and be a mega billionaire and be chilling with Bezos right now. But all those things are unlikely and I don't know if they have any actual real valuable lessons to extract from them. So I don't know, Answer my answer is I probably wouldn't change anything. Enjoy the journey, learn along the way. What US state do you currently reside in? When you retire, do you plan on moving to a different state? I'm in Texas and I don't know, probably wanna live in some other places maybe, or at least buy some properties in other places to go visit, no current plans. What are the tips, words of advice you would give your past self when you were just barely getting into crypto? I tell myself to put in the work, do the research, make my own decisions. Early Andy, early crypto investor Andy just bought whatever someone was talking about on Twitter or on YouTube or whatever. No rhyme or reason, no personal conviction or belief. So I would start by educating myself, developing my own thesis for why I think these things have a place in the market. And then I would chase that thesis with all of my money, which is what I'm currently doing right now, but I had to learn those lessons before I got here. The passive income streams you have from crypto, do they all involve mining rigs? Nope, only one of them does, which is my two GPU mining rigs. Several of them do include hardware, um, but no, the majority of them are crypto nodes, just running hardware in the cloud with coin collateral and earning rewards. My actual mining rigs are one of the smaller pieces of my crypto passive income pie. When are you going to release your inner degen? I feel like I'm already in the process. I'm being born anew as a beautiful degenerative uh, butterfly out of my degen cocoon. And said cocoon is earning 3,500% APY in Ape Token, and I'm loving it. If you enjoyed that video, which I hope you did, then watch this video, which was the very last time I did one of these. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.